Hey, good morning, you guys. I know it's been a while. I've been traveling for work. Um, but I'm here now, and as promised, I'm going to start my video series, series rather. Um, first thing, I'm going to introduce you to two applications. The first one is going to be the Tesla mobile application, and the second one will be the Sense Energy Monitoring, Energy Home Monitoring application. Okay? Well, before we go any further, let me say I thank God for you guys. I thank God for my life. And I thank God for all the things that He's given us all, the sacrifices He's made for us all. And without Him, there's nothing. And if you don't believe that, I'll pray for you. But look at the facts. Just take time to look around. It's evident. With that said, God bless you all in everything you endeavor to do, now and forever. All right, let's jump right into it. As you can see, we're in the Tesla um, mobile app, Home. This is what you see when you first log in. Um, we're going to go through just about everything I have here, and then I'll post this guide, and I'll do the sense later on today. And then I'll uh, post that, and then we'll go into the uh, the energy utilization and uh, backup battery capabilities. I have two power wall, as you, most of you guys already know. For those that don't know, I have two power wall. I have a 7.6 kilowatt system, um, solar system, and um, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna explore it. Um, I, I have a few videos out already, and we're gonna go into it more in depth now. As you can see, the battery is down to 18%. Uh, my house is a consuming house. I mean, just the other day, uh, we, in a day, my family killed about 70 kilowatts, or utilized about 70 kilowatts of energy. And it's for numerous reasons. I mean, I live in Florida, so AC is constantly going. Uh, the dryer is a big consumer. Um, I don't really have the water heating scenario as bad as it was with just an elemental water heater because I have a hybrid water heater. I also have a video about that for those that don't already know. Um, so it's a hybrid system that utilizes uh, AC or heat pump technology to heat the water versus the element. The element can be utilized. It is this one is a ream hybrid water here it's pretty cool it has um, a screen touch screen that you can select different mode of operation and uh, the one i use is an uh, energy saver constantly which well, how that works is that the water heater will um, use the ambient air heat <clears throat> to heat the water it compresses it down make it hotter and and, and discharge that heat into the water and if the demand is too high for the existing heat in the air, then it will utilize the element and it will heat, it will assist the um, heat pump with the element until it can catch up and then it shuts off the element, which minimizes the utilization of energy. But that's another story for another time. <laughs> um, let's get into the app. So the gear up in the left hand corner here. That just takes you to your login screen. It has switched to my home. Guys, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what that my home bit is yet. I tried, I'll click on it so you can see. And then it shows you that and it doesn't really work yet. I think it's a work in progress with Tesla. Um, eventually, the, I mean, hopefully eventually they'll get to that and, um, and make it work. Uh, and then loot box is all about uh, basically making money i guess um with the tesla scenario gives you the you can um give out that's my um code right there if you guys for those of you who's thinking about getting a solar system you know you can get up to uh 25 years instead of the 20 years uh warranty um and or you can get unlimited supercharging free unlimited supercharging for model s model x and model 3. um so it's um it's just basically it and then refer contacts to Tesla and all and, and all that promotional nonsense which we're not interested in. I'm sure most of you guys already looked at, but that's just what it is. Um, 
and then our notification you can tell the system to notify you when there's power outages and so forth and i'm sure there'll be more in there this technology of this this these uis unit interfaces are constantly improving and i've seen a lot of growth in the tesla motor app sorry guys the tesla mobile app since its, its inception or since i have started utilizing it and um and it's come a long way since then so so there's a lot of options there um but we still got more to go so let's jump back in there so as you can see we're charging it's uh 8 36 here in, in florida it's a very clear morning um i'm not showing that to you i usually start off with a face-to-face -face. this time i'm just wanting to define these apps for you guys and then we'll go back to our original uh, process 19 percent where we are and we'll see more about that here in a bit um, i'm gonna get through all these and then we'll define what that is um just a little tidbit for some of you guys that don't know so what i did i scroll up just to reveal the rest of the options here for the tesla mobile tesla mobile apps guys forgive me for the the, the tongue, tongue twisting going on here but um got a lot on my mind um <laughs> but it's all good if you look down to the bottom here where it says power wall and then it has 2x power wall and version number well I figure out I have a buddy that just have one power wall. So for those of you who always wonder, well, can you see both your batteries? No, the answer is you cannot. It only shows one battery and what you're seeing is a combined uh, percentage there between the two batteries. You have 19% of energy. I have a reserve, which my batteries won't go below for, uh, uh, for supply power. It won't go below 20% because I have a 20% reserve in the event that power goes out the batteries will have 20% reserve even after full home support. Um, it will have 20% in the event power go out. It gives us time to do what we need to do, um, uh, secure stuff, you know, shut down PCs, whatever the case is, all that kind of stuff. Um, and on 20%, if you're just running lights or maybe some fans, you can go a long time with these power walls, especially with two of them. So. That's what that 2x, so if I had 3, it would be 3x, if I had 4, it would be 4x, all the way up to 10, which I think is the max power wall you can have in a, in a chain or in any one solution. So, just so you guys know, that's what that means, 2 times whatever amount of power wall, if it was just a 1, it would be 1 times, and that's how it, that's what that, that, that number indicated, and I figured it out through, like I said, a buddy having just 1, and I having 2. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, I'll go right back down. So here it shows a battery, which it depends on how many power walls you have. It's a combined effort and the percentage of the, um, the current state of charge. All right, um, going to Powerful. Powerful reveals your reality here. So we have 1.5 coming in from the house. Sorry. 1.5 coming in from the solar and 2.2 uh, from the grid and 3.7 being uh, consumed in the house. This is the power flow currently. Um, the house, in this case, I mean, yeah, I, I'm even a little perplexed right now because the house. Oh, okay, I can tell you why. That's that's exactly why this is. Okay, so remember what I told you. I have a 20% reserve, right? So the reason why you're not seeing... I was a little confused for a second as well, and I know most of you were as well. Well, why aren't you putting power to or pulling power from the power wall? Well, as I mentioned just a few seconds ago, I have a 20% reserve. And because I have a 20% reserve, the, um, the power wall is not allowed to give me any energy because that's reserve energy. Now, why was it at 19%? Okay, it was at 19% because the power wall is stand alone. This is why the power walls are 14 kilowatt power walls. You can only use 13.5 of that 14 kilowatt power wall. It's because you're not allowed to go below that 0.5, which sustains the power wall systems. Um, and then when the power wall is in operation, again, it doesn't use any solar energy for operation other than the captured solar energy or any uh, grid energy. 
um, for, for its own internal operation. It self-sustains. It stands by itself. That's why it can operate if you're in an uh, off-grid scenario. You can use a power wall because it doesn't need any external power to power itself. It powers itself with its own sustained power. So that's why they limit you down to not completely 14 kilowatts utilization. So it can operate itself while you're depleting it. And then once you get to the max cutoff, then they have enough to get its systems in order before it has to do an intermittent shutdown. Um, so where, where the house is requiring 3.8, the solar is producing currently at this moment at 8.40 in the morning, 1.6, which is good as a clear sky. And we'll get up to about, if it stays clear like this, you'll see maybe after lunch, it'll be at max capability or max potential, which is 6.6. .6, and that's only because of the limit of the, um, the inverter, which is a 6.6 .6, um, uh, delta inverter, um, so the inverter can't go beyond its max limit, but your solar potential stays strong at that 6.6, .6, and it doesn't flicker, it doesn't go up and down, it's just maxed out produce, um, producing on, uh, energy produ production at that steady pace, even if a uh, slight variation in the direct, in the light, the sunlight, because it's the potential of the, the panels are greater than the inverter's capability, it stays locked 6.6. .6. So that's one of those benefits. But anyway, I digress. Um, so as I said, 1.6 from the roof, 2.2 from the grid, the house is consuming 3.8. And that's because of, um, uh, I can tell you if you have a sense, but the AC is running and then typical house uh, operation. I know the, the uh, water heater is going in. Heat pump techno heat on the water heater is only about 400 watts. So that's a combine of that and then just general stuff here. General stuff in the house being operated currently. Um, once the solar potential gets high enough where it can sustain the house and send power to the power wall, it will. And then this will change, and hopefully you'll see that change by the time I'm finished defining this um, app for you. Um, or if the house requirement um, diminishes, which it will, will once the AC shuts down, then we will stop pulling from the grid and we'll start directing power to the power wall, whatever excess power we have. Uh, the order of precedence here, the house comes first, then the power wall, then the grid. That's the order. Unless I do the battery, I set up the battery for backup only, then we focus, we still have to go house. It's still the same concept, so I don't even know why I said that. The house first, power wall, grid. That's the reality. Why? Because on demand, the house is priority. So what you just saw, you saw it jump to 5.4. Um, that may have been because of um, a stove, the stove being turned on and so forth. Um, again, it's eight, 40 in the morning, so I'm running this video concurrent with my family waking up and getting ready for our day to go to church and all that good stuff. Okay, with that said, now before I come out of here, I'll show you what all capabilities can be done in here. So, whichever one we want, any of these sections, you have four of them, you have solar, you have grid, you have power wall, you have home. If I touch any of these, uh, well, let's go with grid. If I touch grid, it will go into the grid power energy usage and it'll show you what was done with the grid um, uh, from midnight. It's today's reference, so it's gonna be midnight to midnight. So you can see we have some energy now. For, this is pretty cool because I just learned this the other day. I always said, why would Tesla limit you like this? So you have to guess. See like right here where this peak is at 9.2. I was like, okay, well, what that's, I have to extrapolate. Maybe that was about 7.30 or 7.15. I don't know. And then it was playing around with this and I saw this line, which denotes the, the um, where it's currently at, where it's currently trending. So I was just, uh, and I pressed and hold the screen and voila, look at that. You can move that line. Now you can see exactly when that spike occurred. And it was, uh, let's see, bring it slowly. It's a little tricky. See, 9.1, it occurred at 7.30. Well, I wasn't too far off. It occurred at 7.30 and, um, hold on guys, bear with me. It occurred at 7.30, close enough, and um, on Sunday and the 26th. So I see that. So I can, if I wanted to look specifically at when something happened, I can gauge and talk to the family and say, hey, what happened there? Did you use anything? And they say, yep. Yeah, but the, 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 um, the sense energy monitor, when we go through that, you'll see that tells you everything. So combined, I can figure this stuff out. 
So you can trend back and see what time these spikes were and all these the descendant spikes here, uh, one at four o'clock and two before then, those are the AC. And as the temperature in the attic diminishes and the AC has less of a demand and the house doesn't, re uh, doesn't warm down as fast as it would with all the uh, radiant energy coming out of the attic. But sadly enough, by the time that radiant energy diminishes throughout the night, the sun is already coming back up. So it's like a perpetual cycle. So anyway, as you can see, is uh, from the grid. We, since midnight last night to currently um, about 8.30 or 8.46, we have utilized 12.1 kilowatts. And then to the grid, that's probably not real, uh, but 0.1, which I don't think, I think that's just um, one of those er erroneous erroneous signals or erroneous values um, you can change the uh, uh, you can change to yesterday and look at your so here we go so this big void in between all these uh, signatures at amplitudes here is where solar transpired and I'm going to show you how you can combine these different um, uh, trends and see everything overall but I just want to go through one at a time to show you how it, it translates alright so yesterday you can see so from about 8.30, which is about now when the sun is up and we're starting to hit the face of the panels to about, again, uh, 7.30. In this case, yesterday was not accurate. It usually go until about 8 or a little after, but yesterday we had some very significant thunderstorms, so a lot of the energy diminished during that time frame. So yesterday from the grid, we did pull 25, again, because as you can see, there's a lot of energy utilization in the house. It was Saturday, so people were home, and we... Um, and we saw, uh, and we had thunderstorms, so that's a problem there too. And then yesterday we put nothing back to the grid because we didn't even get to charge up with power. It got up to about 60%, 5.5 or something like that. Um, uh, so really didn't have any access to go to the grid. All right, so that's that. And then you can go back beyond that a week and then they'll show you, well, I don't know what, why they're not showing anything for a week. But it'll show you kind of um, how much energy for that time frame or for that segment of time, 0.4 me megawatts, right? Um, okay, so let's just go back to today. And then what we'll do, we'll go back out. And as I said, from here, you can select any one. So we go to solar, same thing. You see, you can see the reference. You see, we started just before 8 to start pulling. So about maybe about uh, 7.45 or so, we started to collect energy. The uh, inverter waked up. And now we're just, we're trending. All right, the day is beginning. So for uh, the solar and um, how that one kilowatt has been distributed, 74 to this house, like I said, the majority is also to the house, 18.4 to the power wall, and then um, 6.9 to the grid. All right, so that's that. Now, remember on the previous screen, I'm gonna go back and show you. I can select, so okay, so the perfect example, see the house requirement diminished, so now we have excess energy. Well, we had excess energy, but I think, like I said, the, the stove is running and all these various stuff, so it was, but you saw where we were sending power to the battery. All right, now let's clarify that. Why is that the case? Because the reserve, I spoke about this just a few minutes ago, the reserve is 20%. So why, were, so why are we lower than 20%? Why? Because the battery sustains itself, as I mentioned. So it's going to consume whatever power it has in there. So even though it might have shut down a 20% UI, the web UI, where you can monitor it from a PC and the devices that don't have application-based um, UIs, well, Tesla have ability for you to monitor the gateway and pull all this information from a UI a web page and it's a little complex to get into it but I'll, I'll probably do a segment on that as well a little bit later on in the series okay so <clears throat> so that's what's happened so let's say my house was without power for a week I had no solar I had no no grid power it don't matter what grid power the batteries will consume itself right down to zero to sustain itself, to maintain the batteries, to maintain temperature and all these various things. All right, so that's that. So let's jump right back into PowerFlow and finish this up. So look at the house so right now, we have big energy, right? <clears throat> so if we went into the house, right? 
and we just clicked on that and see home utilization or home usage so we've used since midnight last night we've used 13.4 kilowatt we scroll down and we can see from the solar because we're pulling from solar we, we are 6.9 and from the grid 93 and this is percentage guys not actually <laughs> wattage or kilowatts um, 93.1 kilowatts from the grid and 6.9 from the solar and nothing from the battery because the battery has been dead since yesterday evening um, and again you can trend back you can look at when these spikes occur all that good stuff this is going to take a change once the sun gets high enough to sustain the house needs and when we leave for church and the house is on low consumption again the batteries can get the blunt of the power nothing goes to the grid until the batteries are fully charged by the way just doing the information and you can do the same thing with any of these spheres of yeah spheres any of these segments the four segments which is um, solar grid um, home and um, power wall okay so with that said um, now what I want to show you so let's say let's go into the battery now and the same thing for the battery and you can see there's a little bit of charge that went to the battery um, that's what beneath that line means see so two power wall, 0.2% oh yeah 0.2 kilowatts um, and from the power wall zero because it's been at the cutoff point um, if you top you see the house you see the solar all these fields I can activate and and do overlap of the each segment and see how they translate see here we go and let's go back to yesterday where you see a better depiction of it <clears throat> okay so you can see so obviously the blue is the house utilization the yellow is the uh, production produce energy uh, the green is the supplied energy via the battery boat receive and, 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 and supply and um, and then of course the gray which blends into the which matches the blue which is a home utilization perfectly is the grid the only time the grid disappears is when um, when solar is in play so you won't see but the spikes you see on the in, 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 uh, integrated into the yellow is the home utilization which is pulling energy from the sun okay and then if you scroll down to the bottom, it's a, a source of information. See, it tells you, yes, uh, yesterday was a big um, uh, consumption day as well. 55 kilowatts from, from the house. Uh, the house utilized 55 kilowatts. The solar produced 31. Like I say, it wasn't the best day. Um, power wall, from the power wall, we took 11. Uh, to the power wall, we put 12. And then from the grid, we took 25. And and to the grid we only put 0.1 or next to none and if I take away if I strip away all these other ones and just show you solar you'll see when those storms clouds started to come in so that was a roughly we can look at that exactly that was roughly about uh, yeah about uh, 13 30 about 1 30 um, the storm started to come in off and on clouds were building and then it dropped off sharply it dropped off sharply about I would call it about there about three o'clock is when the clouds all um, combined and um, started to turn into thunder storms and it just went bad from there and it dropped off uh, completely about um, about 1900 which is seven o'clock and that was due to like massive overcast overcast and dumb and thunderstorm systems in play okay and that's it guys that's that's the the power flow which is a valuable tool it gives you all the current scenarios what's going on um if my power wall had power i can show you where we can supply all this condition some of the previous power wall videos but i'll mention again the power wall each power wall can uh, output five kilowatts and i have two so i have a max of 10 kilowatts if the house was pulling like 12 kilowatts as it is right now then what we would do we would pull the other two kilowatts from the solar which is two kilowatts so we still wouldn't take from the grid if we were to exceed what the solar was producing and the power wall max 10 so let's say we're pulling 14 to the house then we'll pull the excess two from the grid that's how it works okay all right let's go back out so that's nine so that's still at 19 percent we're going to start putting power to the once we stop with the morning routines once performance will tell you how you did for that day um how much utilization how much how much how, how self powered your self powered ratio uh, percentage ratio so um for the day we've been about eight percent uh let's go back to yesterday and see 
And what that means is that that's how much energy you supply to the house and not, and not from the grid. All right, so 36 was from solar and 20 was from the power wall. Total of 56% total. Everything else, which is that remaining, um, in this case, that remaining 44% came from the grid. Okay, and let's go back to uh, let's go back to the week. Let's go down to a week and see how we've done for a week. 67%, which isn't bad. Like I said, I had some 70 kilowatts days and high 50s, so it's not bad considering how much energy has been utilized uh, in the home. Okay, so. That's that basically, there's nothing else to the performance um, segment. All right, now backup history. We can look and see exactly when backup power was, uh, a backup power event transpired. Um, and it outlines and tell you for how long and so forth. Uh, a lot of these are just blips, but like here on March 11th and you know, all that stuff. Um, but five minutes in there. but we don't even notice these things happen because again the power wall kicks in before you can even and even if the the, the high the, uh, sorry the lights dim momentarily you don't pay attention to those type unless you're directly paying attention okay uh and then uh after that's customized this is where it gets interesting this is where you have some options you have uh, the backup only, like I told you, so 100% of the battery will go to just backing up off-grid scenario, backing up the scenario in the, in the event, backing up the house in the event that, uh, power, uh, during the power outage. Um, Self-power is the one I use most, uh, most of all, is because what that does, any uh, power requirements for the house, this will supply via the batteries, even if, if the, the, grid, the grid goes down the same thing or if... Uh, uh, the demand is high or if solar is low before I go to the grid the batteries will be depleted that's the process with the exception of the selected amount which it says reserve for power outage those that 20% so I'll always keep 20% in the batteries just for the event when we start doing our load testing I'm gonna take the batteries to zero for you guys so you can get a good understanding of what a full battery will do during certain operations in a, in a household, especially a household of mine, so that's a household of six, okay? Um, and then you have time base. This allows you to, you know, use your energy for ver uh, various times a day. So, you know, you guys have these, uh, I, I don't know, we don't have them here with SQL, but um, time of usage and all that kind of stuff where um, your rates might be lower, um, during the nights and higher during the day. So you would want your power wall to be fully utilized during the rates are lower. Um, so that's that kind of stuff. And I think they have more to come out on that, but that's all right. Another thing that just recently out, which was pretty cool, is that if, if Tesla, or not Tesla, but if the application sends uh, thunderstorm warning or uh, bad storm warnings, not just a thunderstorm, it won't do it for a thunderstorm, but if a bad storm, a hurricane in Florida where I live is coming in, it will not, it will suspend uh, power wall operation and just charge it because it's going to prepare my system for the, and especially like I use self-powered mode because I can take the, the power wall down to 20%. And, and I might not be home and then there's a storm coming in something substantial and I can remotely change it obviously but why if the system can monitor it itself um, and it will suspend power wall operations to allow for max po um, power potential from the battery until the, the storm has cleared or until there's no longer a warning for that storm okay so that's a pretty cool feature I, I went ahead and enabled it because I thought it was handy to have and that's it. So this is basically what the customize does. So in a nutshell, guys, this is your Tesla app. Um, nothing has happened with the battery right now because uh, most of the energy is being consumed in the home uh, because of the time of day. So we just had a house drop down to 1.6. We're producing 2.2 on the roof. Um, and so we can put 0.6 to the power wall. So if I go back to the power wall right now, you'll start to see the charging is ascending, showing that it's receiving power. And again, that power just went away back to the house because of the demand of the house, okay? Well, all right guys, um, 
I don't know that there's much more here I can show you. Some of this is I'm going to do some time lapse of uh, power utilization, probably a side by side with the Tesla app and uh, flow, power flow, and uh, my sense. So you can see what energy is being utilized during the time power is being supplied and the, how the exchange of power, uh, the power exchange transpire between the power walls and the house and the grid and the grid and solar in the house and solar in the power wall, solar in the grid. So we got a lot of content coming out here shortly. You guys just stay tuned. And that's, again, you guys remember I tell you I'm busy. I, got, I have to provide for my family, have a life to live, but I'm doing this for you guys so you can have that. I wish someone did this for me when I was contemplating buying my solar system and now that I have it, I, I vow that I would uh, put, up, put as much information out for you guys as possible to, to make your informed decision as to what you want to do going forward, okay? All right, guys, well, thanks again. Remember, keep your faith, trust in God. Jesus is always there listening for your call. Um, he loves you, and I love you too. God bless you all, and have a great day. Bye.